Hey, good morning, everyone. Howdy. Mike drank all the coffee and didn't feel like making another pot, so I have to resort to tea. <laughs> I drank all the coffee? Yeah. Okay, I'll accept that, because <laughs> I kind of did. Well, give you full context. This morning, as I'm sitting in my recliner watching the news, or the fake news, <laughs> I happened to notice that there was some deer crossing the driveway, so I had to go get the camera and uh, record the deer. <laughs> and of course, that upset all the dogs that were here in the house, all three of them, and just having a fit. They wanted to go out and chase them so bad. Well, we kind of knew what was going on because this morning at about quarter to four, the, um, the outside light kicked on. I didn't see them, but the dogs must have because they started growling, barking at the window, but as soon as the, the light went out, that was it, and walking in the driveway this morning while I'm finishing off the coffee, <laughs> I could see all the fresh tracks. Oh yeah, and I went out to, you know, break the ice on all of the animals' water and tracks everywhere, yeah. so they came in for water and food, so. Yeah, so. Yes. So what are we doing today, Kim? Oh, my goodness. It just, it, it just never ends. Well, it, it doesn't. It doesn't end. This is a huge topic. Yeah. This um, is going to be a long one. Because it, it just doesn't involve what Watchtower does, but it, it really, it really speaks to the mindset of Christians in general. And it really does. And we'll develop this as we go along, but obviously we have to start with Watchtower so that you can see what that mindset truly is. Yes. Now, I want to thank Petra very much. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate you sending me this. It is from the September 2024 uh, study Watchtower, and they just studied Article 37 last Sunday, I believe if my dates are correct, yeah. but it's study article number 37. And there was something interesting in there. And it starts on page 8 of this particular watchtower. And uh, what Petra sent me was a screenshot from page 11. Um, we all know. We were Jehovah's Witnesses for 40 plus years. 49 for me, 42 for him. And we were always taught, you cannot serve yeah. two masters. All Christians believe that. Yeah. And we have a friend who's a Muslim. He believes that. They have the yeah. same beliefs in most religions. You cannot serve two masters. And along with that, because they both do identify with each other serving two masters or holding two opposing opinions in your brain okay so when she does this I'll give you an example of how people and in particular Christians hold two opposing opinions yeah and the thing is is most will think of this as oh you can't slave for riches right. and for God or Allah, or, you know, Elohim, whoever you want to believe in the source. You know, you can't slave for yourself and become rich. And so this, I mean, like Mike says, well, it, it, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, how does the, how can you sort this out in your mind? Well, here again, it... It goes right along with something that's been put into everybody's mindset recently, and it has to do with a political candidate in a word salad. Because when you look at what Watchtower does, and when you examine what we're going to show a little bit later, you can't help but see that these are just people using word salads, a lot of words that have zero meaning. Yeah, exactly. Um, the name of this article is A Letter That Can Help Us to Endure Faithfully to the End. And I've been hearing similar stuff like this my entire life, you know, growing up as a JW and everything. But I'm going to go down to paragraph 10, the subheading, Have Faith for the Preserving of Our Lives. I know, it's, 
it's word salad. Yeah, it and is. I mean it's brutal. It, it's brutal. You know, it's like the same thing we've been hearing, and they just keep, you know, beating this into Jehovah's Witnesses and the indoctrination. But you know, look at it this way: you cannot slave for two masters. I want to bring out in this article, how can you slave for the governing body and the organization and for God? Oh, yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses think they're the one in the one same. One in the same. They're not. They're not. Okay? Paragraph 10, page 10. The Hebrew Christians would also need to trust those whom Jesus was using to direct the congregation. Now, they're talking about right before... Um, the Romans came in and destroyed Jerusalem and how Jesus was warning them this was going to happen and to flee into the mountains. We all know that story. So this is what this is talking about. Back to the paragraph. Those taking the lead likely gave specific instructions to help all in the congregation to follow Jesus' direction at the right time in an orderly manner. Likely gave... Likely, yeah. They weren't there, so they don't know what instruction was given. How well, do we know any instruction was given to them? Because they already were told, flee to the mountains. So why did they need specific instructions? Well, here's the interesting thing. Look at, look at how they automatically start off by separating. Hebrew Christians would all... So how many other factions were there when they were given this mandate? How, how many other Christian groups were there? Because what Jehovah's Witnesses don't realize is that the Apostle Paul in Antioch is the one that came up with the name Christians, well, you, not Jesus. Well, you did a video about this yes, years I did. ago. Yes, I did. That there were several different factions of Christians. There was the Greek Christians. There was the Pauline Christians. There was the sect of Nicholas. The sect of Nicholas. There was other messiahs. Why did Jesus say, when you hear, you know, I'm in the wilderness, don't go out there. I'm here. I'm there. Don't go out and follow them. So there must have been many. The Essenes? Yeah. There was several yeah, different Essenes factions. The Essenes in particular, which is who, if you do your research was strongly associated with John the Baptist. Again, go back to the book of Luke. I did a video on it. Lord, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. And you got a quote within a quote, which is um, really the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father Prayer, but you don't see that in the book of Matthew. Yeah, you have to go to Luke to see that. Yeah. Okay, then it tells the Jehovah's Witnesses to read Hebrews 13, 17. The Greek word used at Hebrews 13, 17 for be obedient <laughs> implies that someone is persuaded to obey because he trusts the person who is giving the direction. That involves more than simply obeying him because he is authorized to give direction. So the Hebrew Christians needed to build trust in those taking the lead before the tribulation came. <laughs> if during times of peace Christians obediently followed the instructions instructions of those taking the lead, it would be much easier for them to do so in times of crisis. So do you see what's going to be coming up in the next paragraphs? Wait for it. Predictable word salad. Yeah. Today we need faith as did those fir who first received Paul's letter. We live at a time when most people reject and even ridicule the Bible's warning about the end of the system of things. No, we ridicule Watchtower and these other religions who have been telling us since we were kids, which would be, you know, later 60s for me, that Armageddon was coming. Oh, Armageddon's coming in 75. And yeah, they did say that even from the platform. Again, that generation is dead and gone and was still here. So why would you still follow their lead? They're wrong about that. Just like they were wrong when you studied the, I think it was the Daniel book, the prophecies of Daniel, when they said that the dual world power became the dual world power in the 1790s, I think it was, um, you know, when the British um, and English armies ended that war, 
the Revolutionary War, but yet at the same time, the British Army burnt down the White House in 1812. Look it up, the War of 1812. So how could they be the dual world power in the late 1700s when in the early 1800s the British Army burnt down the Capitol? They don't think. They don't think about this stuff. But Michael, don't don't say that they're wrong. I they were wrong about 1914. Well, I was just going to say, you told your mom yeah. back then when that book came out and we were studying it in the Congregation yeah. Book Study yep. that this can't be true because they burnt down the White House in 1812. They weren't allies. And guess what? Like he said, oh, Michael, don't ever say they're wrong. Years later, she had to admit, because this is when we were still all JWs, when an article came out and they updated it and yeah. it's like, yeah, their dual world power was not uh, cemented until after 1812. Well, world after World War II. Yeah. See, they were wrong. So why would you trust them? Why? Well, look at, at all well, the things they've had to change. They've been wrong. They're, again, holding two opposing opinions. Yeah. Going back to paragraph 11. Additionally, although the Bible reveals a number of details about how the Great Tribulation will unfold, there are many things that we do not know. <laughs> See, they thing. admit there are many things we do not know. They've been claiming they've known for the past hundred and, what, fifty years? But they do not know. They're admitting they do not know. So why would you put trust in the faithful and discreet slave? When holding, they're false prophets? Holding to opposing opinions. Yeah. We need to have strong faith that the end of this system of things will come right on time and that Jehovah will care <laughs> for us. But, but wait! Come right on time? Before this generation passes away, they're gone. So the end of the system did not come right on time, Watchtower. Paragraph 11 is the doozy. Or excuse me, paragraph 12 is the doozy. We must also strengthen our faith in the channel Jehovah is using today to guide us, the faithful and discreet slave. Strengthen your faith so put faith in the governing body. This not channel. in God. Not yeah. in the Bible. So how is that not slaving for two masters? Because I don't care what anybody says. You cannot make the governing body and Jehovah the same thing that you need to have faith in. How can you have faith in Jesus and the governing body? You know, whoever you want to believe, you need to put faith in. It's either God or Jesus. One or the other. You can't serve both. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve the governing body who admits they've gotten many things wrong and do not know and Jesus and God. Going back to paragraph 12. When the great tribulations be tribulation begins, we may receive specific life-saving yeah. instructions. We may receive? <laughs> See, they do not know. We may, we may, does not mean, yes, we will receive instructions. We may receive instructions. They do not know. But once again, the time period is past because that generation that saw the beginning would still be here to see the end. They're not here. They're gone. Yeah, we may receive specific life-saving instructions as the Hebrew Christians may have received. <laughs> See, they do not know well, if the Hebrew Christians received any instructions or not. Do you want me to know why they, they have to say, like, the Hebrew Christians may? Because it's, it is now a fact. When you do your study, you do your research, even the best of the honest Bible scholars will tell you they know Paul did not write the book of Hebrews. That's why they have to say may. This is why they don't know. If you friends think that Watchtower does not know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Paul did not write Hebrews, then I would suggest you study even more. Because the Bible scholars already know this. 
Well, just like they know Jerusalem was destroyed in 586, 587. Exactly. We were just watching a documentary in archaeology the other day, and they kept saying when Jerusalem was destroyed yeah. in 586, 587. Well, here again, that whole 1914 nonsense is built upon what foundation? 607. So guess what, Jehovah's Witnesses? Since the end of this system did not end within that generation of 1914, that also proves 607 is a false date. Going back to the paragraph. Now is the time to strengthen our trust and confidence in the direction we receive from those taking the lead in Jehovah's organization. Any thinking person, how can we possibly put trust and comfort confidence in the governing body the faithful and discreet slave when they say they are not inspired <laughs> and they have been wrong so many times although there is no divine inspiration today still jesus leads his people progressively through the services of the faithful slave jesus trusts that the imperfect faithful slave will do its best to convey spiritual food. Do you also trust the slave? We cannot expect to follow their direction confidently during the Great Tribulation if we struggle to follow it now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good Lord. There's just so much in this article. Word salad. Yeah. Just yeah. word salad. Now, in paragraph 14, rather than... Fo this is good because... This doesn't have to do with serving to, you know... Masters? Masters. But this was really rich because we know Watchtower is constantly begging for money. They have <laughs> a real estate department. They have a legal department. They have all of these, you know, departments. They have a legal stream website where they're doing interfaith and all of this, dealing with other lawyers and the United Nations as an NGO, crying, you know, for their human rights are being violated and just something came up in Norway about them. They lost the appeal to the Supreme Court in Norway and they are going to be deregistered and not get any federal money and what do they do they write a letter complaining that you know they're being persecuted so they're spending all this time and all these other pursuits real estate empire money you know you name it okay now think about all of that while i read this paragraph 14 about halfway through rather than focus on accumulating as much money as we can we need to make decisions that help us to live simple yet balanced lives. That includes resisting the temptation to take on unnecessary debt or to get bogged down caring for many material things. That's real rich coming from you hypocrites. Wow. We will also carefully avoid becoming overly attached to the possessions we already have. Oy vey. Well you know why they're successful? Do you want to know why they're successful? All of Christianity is successful. Because they use fear to control people. To quote Thomas Jefferson, if you fear something, you give it power over you. And to go along with this, the other morning I decided to click on a video that came up on my YouTube feed of, was it six, set, six, seven things that anger God? And it's like, okay, I got to see what this moron has to say about angering God. Well, guess what? I can only get through the first one. You know why? Because the first one basically was, if you don't start your day in prayer to Jesus or God, you, you, you piss off God. But wait a minute. How is it that your God doesn't stop the sex abuse of children? I offer this as a fact that God doesn't care. Another youth pastor telling News 4 that he reported the alleged child sex abuse to his pastor 
but it was never reported. News 4 was the first to tell you about 91-year-old Charles, Charles Soliavant, a former board member of Shawnee First Church of the Nazareth, alleged to have molested several young girls on church grounds. Have any answers at all? No. We also confronted the pastor who was told by the victims it happened, but he never reported it, instead keeping it quiet. News 4's Dylan Brown confronted another leader in the Nazarene Church today. Dylan, update us. Yeah, Jolene and Kevin, Superintendent Terry Rowland oversaw Shawnee's Nazarene District. He was allegedly told about Sullivan by two different pastors, but they didn't end up reporting it. Shawnee police are confused on how a report from 2016 was never looked into until this year. That was right. It was only until that same victim came back as an adult that anything was done. Members of Shawnee First Church of the Nazarene shocked. Former board member 91 year old Charles Sullivan was arrested. Court records show he admitted to police that he molested several young girls over several years at the church. At the end of his interview with police, he said, quote, OK, I guess it's time to pay up. He didn't want to talk to us. Why did you molest them? Several pastors reportedly knew about allegations and didn't report it. Lead pastor Johnny Stevens, now retired from the church, allegedly told the second victim who came to him, quote, Charlie is old. I don't know what this will do to his life. The trust from these girls were in was in your hands. And it seems like the church ignored them. It seems like the church I did not want to deal with it. it. Wasn't I didn't ignore them. I just tried my best to watch him. But it, you failed. There are five victim interviews in court records so far. One went to police with her mom in 2016, but that case languished until this past summer when she went back to investigators who picked up the case. And I told Charlie, you've got to stop this. If you don't stop it, you're going to be in jail. And so you must stop. Would that was after the second girl that I found out. Okay, so how many girls would it have taken for him to go to jail in your eyes? You're being a little bit hypothetic. I'm not. Oklahoma has mandated reporting laws. Citizens, including pastors, have a duty to report crimes against children. After our first report, we heard from another youth pastor who says his job was threatened in 2008 when he warned Stevens about Sullivan. Stevens denying any knowledge of that. Do you feel like you should have gone to the police still, uh, though? I don't know. I don't know all the rules, but I, I guess possibly I might, uh, I might have. The only person who reported it to DHS, a youth pastor from a different church, anonymously. He also allegedly told his lead pastor and the district superintendent at the time, Terry Rowland, who said leave it up to the girl's family to report it. Stephen says he told Rowland too. We confronted the former superintendent. But then I guess your pastor's lying to police that, that he told you about it? Or are you I'm not saying it didn't. I'm just saying I don't recall anything about it. Now records allege Sullivan donated heavily to the church with his time there. Roland hadn't had time to review the case or look back on it yet. He says it is up to the pastors to tell DHS if allegations of abuse do come up. <laughs> yeah, see how disgusting the Church of the Nazarene is. Well, the thing is, is if a Jehovah Witness seen that news clip, they would be saying, oh, isn't that disgusting? How horrible. Yeah. And they will believe it. They'll believe it. But if the news media does a piece about them doing the same thing, oh, well, that's misinformation. That's apostate lies. Two opposing opinions. I'll give you another opposing opinion, okay? 1930s, 1940s. Germany. We all know the significance of that. Every Christian will express how disgusting that happened. Well, what was happening to that group of people. It's basically ethnic cleansing. It's basically all that Genocide. boils down. Genocide. But yet you go read the book of Numbers where Moses tells a military man to kill all the little boys Kill the women that have known the ways of a man, but preserve alive the the little ones that have not known the ways of a man. And every Christian's got to clap like seals getting fed fish. Because, see, this was God's instruction to kill them people. Joshua did the same thing, went through that entire land and wiped out all the Canaanites, Philistines, all of them. And they all clap. But yet you show a disgust. In 1930s and 40s, when somebody does the same thing only to them, you're holding two opposing opinions. Well, going back to it disgusts me. that Nazarene church, 
they knew what was going they on. They knew it. And if you caught it, the 91-year-old Pervo was a heavy contributor and on the board of directors yeah. of that church. So that's probably why they didn't do anything. That's right. So, you know, like Mike says, it's two opposing viewpoints because Jehovah's Witnesses will believe that. And think how horrible that is. But yet when they hear about it in their own organization, oh, well, that's just apostate lies. And they can dismiss it. Right. And deny it. So they're in denial. But well, see, that's only to make themselves feel better and warm and fuzzy. Oh, we're a clean organization. Well, we've showed this picture before in the back of the, Re the Revelation book. Who blesses mankind? Who brings peace? The divine feminine. But yet you read in the mind of prophets, what what does this group of pe uh, people do? They go and disrupt the worship of the queen of heaven because you can read very plainly, all these women said, but we're at peace worshiping the queen of heaven. Don't nope, kill them. You're holding two opposing opinions. You can't serve the devil and God at the same time. So the United States and a lot of brave men go to Germany and end what was happening. Brave men. Jesus and Jehovah or Yahweh did not end that. But yet you look at the Old Testament and how God blesses the genocide of na nations of people. Why? Because they're not worshiping God. Well, how small is your God if he turns your back on you because you don't start your day with prayer? Unflipping believable, but that, that this still dwells in the minds of people. I just, I just don't get it no more. I, I literally don't get it. But see, cause and effect. This is what happens when you wake up and your mind resonates up here now. Just like the Bible says, Train your perceptive powers to distinguish between right and wrong. Out of that same book, you can't call what Moses did was wrong. You can't do it. Well, that's the thing, is when you start thinking critically right. and start resonating at a higher frequency, um, these things no longer make sense to you. And... You know, I always say the Great Awakening started in 2012. Yeah. Because that seems to be when everyone worldwide started waking up. And I'm not just talking about Jehovah's Witnesses and SJWs. I mean, so many in the world are waking up and realizing the old ways don't work anymore. And they're actually starting to resonate with a higher spiritual plane. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, our good friend Monica, you know, her YouTube channel, Crystalline Goddess, you know, she does many videos about this. And it's like, yeah, you're spot on. And it's interesting because you can always tell when someone doesn't understand, you know, some of this stuff that's going on. And it's like, I, I just can't think down here on this level anymore. That's right. And then there's others who are like, well, what's wrong with you? You know, you're just an idiot. Well. You know, <laughs> this past couple of months, I had several that I actually, I feel bad that I had to block them. Yeah. But there was so much hate. And it's like, oh, well, if you don't say anything positive about this side of the political, you know, arena, if you say something negative, and it's like, but don't you see, this person is being an idiot. You know, look at what they said. And they're attacking me. And it's like, well... Did you even watch the clip? Well, you want another really good classic example of this? I mean, this is classic. Okay? You're a Jehovah's Witness, and you wake up through your research, and then you do come to realize that the Washtown Babel Crop Society is hiding CSA. You wake up, and you leave, because you can't stomach what Watchtower's been hiding. But yet, at the same time, you go find a YouTuber sitting in a foreign country, and you become a patron, and that guy's doing the same flipping thing. He's taking patron money, 
and he's gone to Thailand and self-admittedly dating sex workers. How does that work? Cheated on his family. How does that work? How can you justify that type of behavior? You're sick and tired of what Watchtower did, so you stop giving them money, but you go and give some YouTuber money that's doing the same flipping thing. Well, the thing is, is it gets even worse. Because some of us speak out against it, he has filed a lawsuit. Yeah. And then complains about how broke he is. Well, you just hired <laughs> you a hired lawyer. lawyers. You know, maybe if you weren't paying all these lawyers for this frivolous lawsuit that you're not going to win anyway, and using Patreon money. And like I told Mike, I says, I can't believe these Patreons will give him money and support him on this lawsuit and going and cheating on his family and then turn around and say, oh, I love you, Mike and Kim. I love you, Mike and Kim. You know, great video, great video. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're supporting the lawsuit against us. That's right. You're, you're supporting the lawsuit against seven of us. This is why the Bible says, train your perceptive powers. But let me put it in a little more uh, palatable. Train and exercise your brain. Yeah, and like we've been saying, we just don't get that. I, I just don't get it. This community, by far and large, goes after Watchtower because of their CSA, but yeah, you'll support a guy that self-admits doing the same thing. I, I just dated a sex worker when, you, when he went to Thailand without his family. And we know Thailand is notorious for Oops. underage, you know, prostitution. Yep. Exactly. So I just don't get it no more. I literally don't get it. Outside the concept is that you're still holding two opposing opinions. But that's different. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. I, they, they might as well go back to Watchtower. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've gotten several emails um, asking for the new elders manual and the elders letter. I do not have those yet. Um, and as soon as I get anything, I will do a video. I will do a video, and um, I want to thank all of you for sending me information. Very much appreciated, and um, that's all I have. I said what I had to say because it, this is just, it's redundancy. Yeah. Because when, when you learn to resonate up here, you really begin to see how it's all blended together. It's all the same thing. Yeah, you can see, you know, once you see the pattern, the mechanism yep. what, of what we were indoctrinated with in Watchtower, it's so easy to see it in so many other things. And that's why I've said over and over and over again, beating this dead horse. Lose the fear. Yeah, exactly. Because if you give, well, like Thomas Jefferson said, if you fear something, you give it power over you. But yet, here again, if you don't pray to Jesus in the morning and start your day, he's going to walk away. How is that not bound up in the concept of fear? It is. Well, I thought he was all about love. No, no, he ain't. Not according to what some of these people are putting out there. It's the total opposite. Yeah. Total yeah. opposite, but they, they can't resonate. They can't see it because fear of walking away from a storybook is greater than their love for mankind. Yeah, it's so true. So thank you everyone so much for watching. And, you know, we appreciate all of you who watch our videos and subscribe, like, all of that. We appreciate you because, you know, that tells us that you still enjoy our videos. And um, it's been a long, what, 10, 11, 12 years 10, 11, 12 doing, years. you know, what, 3,000 videos. And, I mean, the, vi the views on our channel 
you know, we appreciate it because I believe it's over 20 million now. Well, you know what I really appreciate about all of this? We haven't had to buy one subscriber. Yeah, like some. We haven't had to yeah. buy one subscriber. Yeah, and believe me, I've gotten offers. Yeah. I, I've gotten offers. It's like, hey, you know, I can give you a thousand subscribers in, you know, a few minutes or 10,000 views or whatever. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, we're going to do this organically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, well, there, there it again, goes against my principles. Well, it goes against my principles, too, because once you hand money to somebody in this context... They own you. You no longer own yourself. Your patrons own you. Yeah. Well, look at... You were watching a video and they were showing a clip. The guy on... <laughs> yeah. What was it? YouTube or something. Yeah. He was complaining about the day after the election. He lost... Yeah. What was it? Over 5,000 5, subscribers. subscribers. Yep. And, he <laughs> does, and he does... And his views have tanked. You know, yeah. he's not getting the views. Well, why do you think? Because you were lying to your subscribers. Yep. <laughs> and now and now he's in front of the camera crying. <laughs> yeah. And, yes. and he's not an XJW no. or anything no, like just, that. Well, he, he's, he's a political influencer. Political hack. He's a See? political influencer. Political hack. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that just gives you an example and you know it is what it is yeah it is what it is so you know we appreciate all of you and you know since this is the thanksgiving weekend we appreciate you and we're grateful and very thankful for all of you yeah and and thank you for understanding me because a lot of you can see the raw unadulterated emotion because this crap really does get to me because i cannot fathom how a human being can hold two opposing opinions in their brain and that's why we had to cover you know at least a little bit from this article yeah because how can you slave for the governing body and believe them when they say they're not inspired and that they don't know and we know they've been wrong many 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 times in the past and yet have faith in them and God or Jesus, you know, yeah. whatever you believe. But there again, according to this one video, if you have faith in Jesus or God and you don't pray every day, the thumbnail indicates God will turn his back on you. How small that God really is. Yeah. How small that God really is. Well, another... Um, disconnect is how can God bless an organization or religious organization like Watchtower or the Nazarene Church or the Mormon Church or the Catholics or any Southern when you, Baptist when you have such a systemic CSA problem how can God bless that organization two opposing opinions he can't they're in conflict can. They contradict each other. You need to get rid of that contradiction in you. Yeah. So thank you for having tea with us this morning, and you all have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.